The Sultan has chosen by compact to cede certain of his sovereign rights in order that Christians residing in his dominions may enjoy the milder laws of their own country and not be subject to rough and summary processes of Mohammedan justice because they was worshiping Christianity. Greetings. Today we have a very, very strong demonstration. This is the American arrest at Tangier. Now what this is, it, there was two Europeans who ran from Boston and they ran to the kingdom of Morocco for help from the Sultan because they was being politically punished for their beliefs from Boston, from the Christian powers, as it says. Now, the Sultan created the jurisdiction in America for the Europeans to practice their Christian religion and not be punished by the Muslims because they're they're obviously breaking Muslim law. You know, Christians, they wake up in the morning on Sunday, they'll go to McDonald's and get them a bacon and sausage biscuit and they'll walk into church with grease fingerprints on their Bible. And that same Bible gives them their dietary law that they shouldn't eat pork. And it's not for some mystical, magical reason. It's because it's not good for you. It hinders you from thinking clearly so there was many things that the Christians was doing but the Sultan told his people what do you want to do murder them all so we're going to put the blood on their own hands and let them practice their little law and we know that it's going to lead to the wrath of Allah so don't kill them just we're going to put them over here and let them practice their law so that began the Christian powers jurisdiction in America for themselves but these Europeans ran they didn't have an allegiance so we're going to go over this article and read, and I'm going to break down to you the Moorish government and how they gave Christian powers jurisdiction for themselves, but not over the Sultan, because they showed up in Tangier talking about we're, we're, we're trying to arrest two of our subjects, and through the treaty that you made with us, we have jurisdiction over him and not you. But the Sultan has to remind them. From the Gibraltar Chronicle, March 11th. With respect to the allegation that no pressure had been put upon the Moorish government to effect the arrest, and that by the law of Morocco the representatives of a Christian power has jurisdiction over the subject of his own government, the true state of the facts appear to be this. By the law of Morocco the Sultan has absolute and despotic power in his dominions, which confers and supports AAA 222141, where U.S. laws jurisdiction in Morocco true state of the fact appear to be this by the law of morocco the sultan has absolute and despotic power in his dominions by special conventions he has waived the exercise of this power over the subjects of christian states that's what they're trying to tell him delegating it to the ministers and consular representatives of these states these conventions however code the jurisdiction over christians residing in morocco for offenses committed in the country and have never been understood either by Morocco or Christian states to confer upon the latter the right to persons and capture upon more territories. Political offenders. The whole reason why we came, came here so that we could get asylum and protection because we was being persecuted. Such offenders have, such offenders have heretofore found as secure an asylum in Morocco as in any dependent state of Europe. They have usually been men of liberal opinions flying from the persecution of an absolute government, and it will be singular if this refuge should now be destroyed by the agent of a government boasting itself the freest in the world. They're saying they're the freest in the world, but you got you have upright men running and running from you. Whoever will turn the last British treaty with Morocco, that of 1857, will find that while Article 11 gives the right to British consular to call for the assistance of more soldiers to arrest and transport British subjects, Article 15 specifies the only case in which such subjects are to be conveyed out of the country and placed on board ship, namely, when sailors attempt to desert their vessels a very necessary provision to prevent British shipping being disabled in Moorish parts for one of hands. So like these warrants and all that, it can only be as if one of their employees is deserting. So he's breaking it down, Article 15, like you chasing them saying you have jurisdiction over your subjects, but they're coming here for asylum and you have no jurisdiction in Morocco. England does not even stipulate for the surrender of deserters. 
but there is a reciprocal engagement that deserters from the service of one state shall not be received into the service of the other. We may fairly assume that the conventions made with Morocco by other Christian states are substantially the same as that of England, and that equal privileges and advantages are preserved by all. This being so, it is evident that no pressure would be required to be put on the Moorish authorities to effect the arrest of any foreign Christian, seeing that under the article we have quoted, it does not appear that the authorities have the right to enter upon the question of the consul's competency to arrest before granting him the assistance of the armed force. The course actually pursued by the Moorish minister, therefore, appears to have been the right one. The assistance of more soldiers was given upon the consul's requisition, but when upon investigation it was found that he had exceeded his jurisdiction, the minister demanded the release of the prisoners and only permitted their embarkation on board an American ship of war after the consul had threatened to strike his flag and leave the country in case of refusal. Then the Moorish minister yielded, fearing the responsibility of involving the sultan in another war. The whole affair is but another version of the old story, the might of the strong overriding the right of the weak. Morocco is an independent state, becoming every year from the importance of its productions, more closely connected with the European system. Christian powers by their treaties recognize it as a sovereign state and it is therefore possesses all the rights of one. The right involved in present question is very clearly defined by the writers of international law by none more clearly than the American authority whereto who says no, so no sovereign state is bound unless by special compact to deliver up persons whether its own subjects or foreigners charged with or convicted of crimes in another country upon the demand of a foreign state or its officers of justice. The Sultan has chosen by compact to cede certain of his sovereign rights in order that Christians residing in his dominions may enjoy the milder laws of their own country and not be subject to rough and summary processes of Mohammedan justice because they was worshiping Christianity. This surely should obtain for him greater respect for the sovereign rights he retains. On this ground, we believe that the United States government will disprove the act of their consul. It is clear, besides this, th there is a question which concerns not only the United States and Morocco, but all the Christian states who have promised with the latter. Under the favored nation clause, all enjoy the same rights, immunities, and privileges. The United States cannot, therefore, push her jurisdiction in Morocco beyond the limits of the others. But since the seizure of political offenders in the territory of the Sultan against his will would be a manifest violating of his sovereign rights, it is not to be supposed that the statesmen who guide European governments will commit the flagrant political immortality of extorting the Sultan's consent to such seizure merely because he is weak and unable to resist. Will the United States then claim a jurisdiction which other governments are prevented by their sense of justice from concerning? We have no right to think so, and it seems more provable that the act of the United States agent at Tangier will not be ratified by his government. So that's the whole article. And basically what the Sultan is letting us know is, hey, you came running to us for protection and asylum, but now you chasing your own people around calling them subjects, but saying you and you the freest world. How can you be a free world, but you have people running from you from per from persecution? You know what I'm saying? So bottom line, the U.S. government has no jurisdiction in Morocco and they can't be chasing down their people like that unless it's been proved that they was deserting. So I done took this into like 10 minutes. You can go over this article yourself. The link will be in the description.